originally from Central Asia, the Turkish people were valued for their intelligence and bravery. In sequence with their archery and horsemanship traditions, it made them superb soldiers and diplomats. For their valuable skills, the Turks were enslaved, transported to the Middle East and placed in the royal courts and armies of the Abbasid Empire. While the scholars were busy assimilating knowledge, Turkish mercenaries, often referred to as Mamluks, had climbed the ranks of the Abbasid army. By the 9th century, some Turkish Mamluks commanded entire armies, while others were entrusted bodyguards for local rulers and dynasties. It would not take long for the Turks to realize that they could just seize power for themselves. In the year 833, Khalif al Mamnun, the 7th Abbasid ruler, saw an opportunity to acquire religious authority at the expense of the ulama scholars. He formally institutionalized the Mutazila doctrine and sought to eradicate other theological schools. As such, the Khalif enforced an inquisition known as the Mihna. Scholars who were employed in state-funded schools and madrasas were forced to profess their allegiance to Mutazilism and submit to the curricula of Neoplatonic philosophy and Aristotelian metaphysics. Those who refused were punished by lashing, imprisonment or beheading. al Mamnun passed away in the same year as he decreed the Inquisition, but his policy was continued through his immediate successors. Most intellectuals submitted to the official Mutazila creed, however a scholar named Ibn Hanbal from Baghdad refused to recognize the rationalist doctrine. He argued that the Quran was eternal and that it was not open for interpretation or innovation. Hence, the scholar and his followers rejected free will, metaphysics, rationalism, and subscribed to the literal interpretation of the Quran. Ibn Hanbal's theological view could not be more different than the Mutazilite scholars, who argued that the anthropomorphic verses in the Quran, which mention the hands, eyes, and face of God, indicate that the holy book should not be interpreted literally. Building on that, the Mutazilites stressed that the Quran was open to rational interpretation and innovation. In any case, for his defiance, Ibn Hanbal was imprisoned, tortured and even banished from Baghdad. For over a decade, the Abbasid rulers tried to break the scholar, but in their pursuit, the Khalifs had inadvertently made Ibn Hanbal a folk hero. Over time, the Inquisition became unpopular with the people, and in some cases, riots erupted in the streets of Baghdad in support of Ibn Hanbal. Under these circumstances, in 847, al mutawakkil ascended to the throne as the 10th Abbasid ruler. At the age of 26, he reigned over the largest empire in the world. Yet, his authority was in question and he needed to swiftly restore his legitimacy. Thereupon, al mutawakkil enforced a populist decision. The Khalif ended the Inquisition and effectively endorsed the literal creed of Ibn Hanbal. In the end, the defiant scholar had outlived three Khalifs. As he was hailed a champion of Islam, Ibn Hanbal founded his own institution of theology that bore his name. This had a profound impact on the course of Islamic civilization. For one, religious authority became an exclusive purview of the ulama scholars and the Khalif's role was reduced to political authority. Second, Ibn Hanbal's defiance reduced the credibility of the Mutazila. As such, in the following decades, a backlash against Mutazilism spread across the Abbasid realm. And third, the end of the Inquisition facilitated the formation of more orthodox theological movements, many of which are still active. For instance, at the present, the Safai school is predominant in East Africa and Southeast Asia, while the Maliki school holds an influence in Africa's Maghreb and Sahil region. Meanwhile, the Hanafi curricula prevails in the former Ottoman territories and Central Asia. As for the school of Ibn Hanbal, in the 18th century it experienced a reformation in the Wahhabi Salafi movement and therefore its influence is limited but predominant in Saudi Arabia. Anyway, al mutawakkil who ended the Inquisition, appointed his oldest son as his heir. However, over the years the Khalid shifted his favor to his second son. This rivalry extended into the political sphere as well. The eldest son, al mutawakkil 
Frontier was favored by Turkish slave soldiers, who at the backdrop of the scientific progress had turned from slaves to warriors to entrusted advisors and military commanders. Meanwhile, the youngest son, Al-Mutaz, was backed by the traditional Abbasid elites. Al-Mutasir feared that his father was going to move against him, so he decided to strike first. The eldest son had his father killed by a Turkish bodyguard and became the 11th Khalif.